Well, hi guys, uh, this is Jim, and I'm gonna be doing kind of an impromptu uh, video here. I'm not even sure I'm gonna put this up, but I thought I would at least uh, do the unboxings here. Um, they are old Star Wars stuff that I've had in storage for quite a long time. Uh, I'm gonna go through it. I'm doing just the microphone from the camera, so I'll try to get up here close and, and make sure I can see what's going on, but uh, I'm staring at my phone because it's showing me the picture. Um, let me stick this down here. I can at least get kind of an idea. There we go. All right. So what do I got? Let's see. Well, you guys have all seen my Star Wars Millennium Falcon, of course. So <laughs> that's starting off with. Uh, but this first box is figures. A lot of figures. Um, I mean, I don't know whether to go through these. I, I mean, I'm kind of doing this as a, as, a, as a kind of record of what I've got. So maybe if I go back over these videos, I can actually see what I've got. <laughs> so, if, but if Star Wars collect collectability items are at all interesting to you, then, then this may be your video. If not, just, you know, move on. All right, so I'm going to go through these. This is, this is from the Star Wars Episode One collection, Kai Adi Mundi with lightsaber. And I don't, these are all collected like, you know, back when the sequels or the prequels were coming out. Uh, as well as other uh, you know times, this one is uh, this is a uh, I think a Star Wars figure, but the Ketwal probably in the cantina I'm guessing. Um, so that's that's two. We've only got like 400 to go with. No, I'm just kidding. Not not quite 400. Um, this is Odie Mantrell. This is definitely from the prequel with 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 Utka no Utaga Utoga Tutu Put Droid. Mm -hmm. Probably pod racing people, more pod racing people. Gasgano, yes. Now, I'm gonna make a gigantic mess here because I just realized I'm pulling these out of boxes and then not, you know, having, uh, I was actually making dings in the cardboard. Well, that's just where the things went through. Uh, Boss Nass, of course, we all remember Boss Nass, the, the, the Gungan who didn't like uh, our favorite Gungan. <laughs> the Joss Poor Alien Bounty Hunter, it's apparently from. This is a, a new hope. Oh, he must have been in the canteen as well. Oh. Shooting him down there. Oh, anyway. All right, what else we got? We got uh, Tadme, uh, Pad, Tadme, uh, Padme Amidala in her, whatever, uh, Attack of the Clones position. We've got a, ooh, these guys are cool. The Corsa, Coruscant Guard. I always used to say Corsicant, because, you know, before you actually heard it pronounced by anybody when you read it in a book or something, it was like, yeah. Uh, Darth Vader, an Imperial interrogation droid. This is some kind of original Star Wars, probably New Hope. Uh, Chewbacca as bounty hunter with bowcaster. Yeah. Um, I didn't start. Well, I started collecting stuff uh, when I was pretty young, like you know, twelve. Which when Star Wars came out, but I was only collecting things that you know, books and things that you would collect back then. I didn't actually buy the action figures back when I was. Well, I was too old for action figures, so why would I buy such things? Um, Chancellor Valorum. C-3PO with missing parts. Um, anyway, so, yeah, so when the... When the um, 1995 or so, before the uh, re... re uh, what were they called? Special editions. Before the special editions came out, they started releasing... New, this is uh, obviously the Bounty Hunter... Where's the little thing? Oh, IG-88. Um, and another IG-88, not sure why I have two of those, um, but I do. And then we've got, uh, this was San Sas, Sase, Sase Tin, Tillin, I can't, I don't have my reading glasses on, so I can't read some of this stuff. Anyway, so I started collecting them in 1995 or so, when the, they re-released the figures, they were coming out with the, the new figures, um, and so they were really hard to find initially. I don't know if anybody collects Star Wars stuff with Battle Droid. Um, and this is the Captain Tarpaul's, one of the Gungans. Um, the, in 1995, if you were looking for Star Wars fi figures, you were going to, to Toys R Us or wherever you could find them and like staking them out basically because they would just arrive and disappear within, you know, an hour of them dropping. Uh, Watu, uh, well, obviously Watu, the, the, the guy who tries to jip them. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi with lightsaber. This is a prequel stuff. Episode 1, Battle Droid. I'm not trying to remember if I actually collected figures all the way through Episode 3. I kind of stopped at some point because it just got kind of ridiculous. There were just too many. Darth Sidious, who was Emperor Palpatine. Ooh, cool. Jeg, Jack, 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 it's Porkins. It's Porkins from the, from the 
New Hope, who dies, sadly. Should have gone on a diet, then maybe he wouldn't have died. He would have, his lightsaber would have been lighter and moving faster. Oom 9, and a, one of the, the droids. Uh, another uh, blue Jedi Cor Coruscant guard. I, I must have liked those. Um, or, or, a, or a Marco, or a Marco Pruneface. Let me get that up there right. Or a Marco Pruneface, yes, very nice. Uh, Lobot, of course everybody remembers Lobot. You know, the guy who never spoke, but he, he did all the things with his, oh, oh, he's in a little arm thing, I think. He was always programming stuff. Mon Mothma, who's going to make an appearance, as a, with a different actress, obviously, going to make an appearance in upcoming Rogue One. Uh, Yoda, who can't, you know, no introductions necessary. Um, Zuton, I think that's an original Star Wars New Hope figure, maybe. I believe he's in New Hope, yeah. Um, and the K-3PO, which is from... I want to say this is something on a droid on Bespin. I believe this is one of the droids that types that insults C-3PO when he opens the door and says, oh, "How rude! How rude!" Darth Maul. <sighs> I got one of these somewhere that's actually signed by uh, Ray Parks, the stunt stunt guy who played Darth Maul. Uh, Anakin Skywalker with backpack and grease gun. Yeah. So now I have a. <laughs> I have a bunch of figures. I have one. That goes through to one box. And unfortunately, I have this tin, which has more stuff, but there's some cool stuff in this one. Um, we've got Aura Singh, who was a kind of a big, I think, a comic, like a graphic novel character. And they definitely stuck her. She was in the, one of the prequels, I believe, the first one. Uh, Yoda from Attack of the Clones with something, with force action. He's like on a pedestal or something. Maybe that's his, is that his chair? I think it's his chair that he sits on in the Jedi Council. So, uh, FX7. Yeah, he looks cool. Um, fans choice figure number one, Elora, El, Eloris Madak. Not sure what that was. Some kind of special edition, I guess. And what else we've got? Oh, this one actually was open. I believe my daughter has this Chewbacca somewhere. So yeah, Chewbacca's not in that one. That's the, one of the few ones you'll see that's open. Uh, ben Kenobi from uh, New Hope, or could be from Return of the Jedi. He actually looks like the one from Return of the Jedi. No, he must be New Hope, yeah, because he's not ghost-like. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Bespin Duel, where his hand actually comes off. Yeah, that, one, that's, that one's interesting. All right, don't all fall down on me, please. Uh, this, which is a special... Uh, you had to send away for this, I believe. I forget what the scenario was, but this is Ula and Salacious Crumb. I can't remember whether you had to... Um, whether you had to send these in like a thing. I know I, I did I did that with their... There's a Han Solo uh, in Stormtrooper outfit. You had to like collect X amount of stuff and send it in. The kind of stuff you saw in like cereal boxes and things like that. All right, let's uh, let's take a look at this stuff. So, um, I was very happy to find that these items had appreciated quite a bit, and these are kind of one of the items I'm thinking about displaying actually here in the office. But this is the Ralph McQuarrie figures, one of the two, one of two sets, I believe, um, and these are the way he depicted a lot of the characters in his illustrations. Uh, so some stormtroopers. Darth Vader looks very much like Darth Vader. Uh, uh, stormtroopers, stormtroopers had lightsabers in that uh, in that uh, those uh, conceptual art. I believe that's probably Luke, the Star Killer character, which is Luke, basically. And I think that I'm not sure who that is. Um, and then some other Imperial character here on the end, I think. But uh, I have that one, and I've got this one, which. Is again more characters. I think I believe this is um, Obi Wan Kenobi, and then Yoda, of course, and then Chewbacca, and I think that's Han Solo. Although Han Solo's character and Luke Skywalker's character at one point were kind of the same character, so but I believe that's after they've split him off. Then again, another stormtrooper, and then R two D two and C three PO. Yeah, it's amazing how much obviously C three PO looks kind of like the the female figure, male obviously male looking, but it, almost like the the figure from Metropolis, which I think Ralph and Corey said he kind of based off uh, his art was based off of that as inspiration. Alright, so let me get some of the bigger stuff like an X-Wing fighter. Never been out of the box. Was 
$49 at Walmart. I must have got this for Christmas, I'm going to say. Like, you know, I would, they would just buy me stuff. I mean, well, what to, what to get Jim for Christmas? Star Wars stuff, I guess. So, yeah, I would just get stuff like that, which I, you know, probably never would have bought that myself. But uh, then we have a model. <laughs> uh, this is one of the, uh, you know, probably 10, 15 years ago, Millennium Falcon issues, 15, 20 years ago, maybe. Um, and uh, it's, I believe, in kind of decent shape. I mean, they don't they don't really do a whole lot box wise it just you know, pieces all in here and i have some star wars galaxy card trading card things in the box i don't know why uh what else do we have we've got uh star wars luke skywalker on a tauntaun yep uh and we've got um a speeder bike, which I think this is also conceptual art from, um, yeah, from um, probably Ralph McCord again, his conceptual art. It could be one of the other artists like uh, Joe Johnson. Although I don't think Joe Johnson actually did any art for Empire Strikes Back. I might be wrong about that though. Um, then we have a, well, I guess they're the 1 6 scale figures, the Gamorrean Guard. So that was KB Toys. I want to say that was probably on. Um, Close out or special. Again, I wouldn't pay full price for some of this stuff. I wasn't that, like, I'm a fervent collector, but not you know, to the point where I was just spending all sorts of money. Well, who am I kidding? I spent a crap load on all this stuff. Uh, a Wing Fighter, one of my more favorite ones. I, think, I believe this again was probably something I got for Christmas because I didn't actually, I mostly was trying to pick out things that were kind of rare ish, you know, like I didn't want to just buy everything that was around. The Jabba's Skiff Guards, these were sets um, of three. There are quite a few of these uh, sets of three. These have actually done pretty well, too, as, as uh, those Ralph McQuarrie figures had gone up quite a bit. I want to say like 70 or $80 right now to buy online, and not even that many are available. Um, again, this is one of the conceptual, this is the airspeeder, but it's the conceptual version of it, not the actual version. So I thought that was kind of cool. That was one of the reasons I got that one, too. Then we have, uh, again, this is probably going to be a Christmas present, still wrapped in cellophane press plastic, Star Trivial Pursuit DVD Star Wars Saga Edition. Never even been out of the, <laughs> out of the, 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 the plastic. It's still, still sealed. And it's a Toys R Us exclusive. So, as well as, never been out of the plastic, Star Wars Monopoly. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, uh... I feel bad about never even having played the games. Uh, this one, I believe we did, we did play. The Star Wars Trivial Pursuit. This is the other version, the regular you know, Trivial Pursuit board game version. And we did play this. It's been it's been used uh, once. But, you know, who's going to want to play with me? Because I know all the answers. <laughs> so, yeah, I think I think they, I think I tried to play them with uh, my family with this. And they were like, yeah, but you're not fun. Then we, try, then we have a Lord of the Rings version. And I know all the answers for Lord of the Rings, too. So... Basically, I, I, I can't play those with my family because they, they basically would be like, you know, it's just unfair to have us play uh, with with you. Uh, so, I don't, know if, okay, I don't know if you guys are fighting this at all, but like I said, this is a way for me to just kind of catalog what I've got without uh, having to write it all down and, and such and so on. Okay, I mean, this is kind of a special box. You know, I see why I had this at home. I actually have quite a few boxes in storage. These are just the extra boxes I actually had at home. Um, maybe I'll get my mom to watch these because, you know, these are something that my mom got me, actually, back in the 80s. I was actually in college. There we go. I was in college uh, when these were coming out. And she, she probably saw an ad in a magazine or something for um, basically what was the uh, Franklin Mint, I want to say. It was one of the, one of the companies. Um, Hamilton Collection, the Hamilton Collection. So these are all Star Wars plates. This is obviously RGD2 and, and Wicket. And these, I've had these on display different times uh, when I was in my 20s and so forth. But probably in terms of value, these these are all more the, you know, the, the more, well, my Revenge of the Jedi poster, that is a real, a real deal, uh, not a recreation. So that's probably one of my more valuable items as well. Um, but yeah, these plates would probably definitely still be worth quite a bit. And I'm not going to open all of them because it, you know, there's a lot of them here. But but they are. Um, I'm just going to maybe open some of them here, like Luke Skywalker and and uh, Yoda. And I have all the certificates of authenticity. These are all, like I said, from the early early 80s. I want to say they were released, like 83, 84. 
something like that. I was in I was in college at the time, and I think she was actually buying these and then send, sending them to me. Maybe she was just keeping them at the house. But um, oh, here we go. No, I, I've sealed this one. I sealed that one. That's a, that's a, that's the, one of the bigger plates. It's got like a lot of stuff on it. I remember, if I remember correctly, it has a lot of um, ships and things. But you know, some of the some of the, the artwork on here is it's good. I mean, it's not the best. And like Hansel, it doesn't particularly look that great in this in this shot. But it's it's nice. You know, they, they took scenes from the from the movie and, and kind of rep, tried to replicate them. But yeah, there are a few of these. So down here, I've got some Star Wars Episode One widescreen trading cards. And a Star Wars toothbrush, never been used, which is a plus. Um, all right, so like I said, I'm not going to open all those plates. But there are three more, and then I have this box which has actual like plate holders in it, which came from the Hamilton collection. So yeah, I've actually got wall hanging holders to like if I wanted to hang them up on the wall. Although I don't know if I trust these now that they're thirty years old and potentially in a crack, they would then drop the drop it right in the ground. Alright, so two more boxes here and then we'll, when I'm done, we can turn on the studio and watch it and go, this is really something I want to put up on Kid Maker Network. I don't know. Um, ah, one of the oldest collectible items I have, it's uh, very difficult to find a value on because it's, it's like you, you look for it and you can't find it. Because it is old. It, this, this dates from probably 19... 78, I believe. So, what this, the, nope, 19, yeah, 1978. It's my belt buckle. My Star Wars belt buckle. May the Force be with you. Um, and back in 1978, yeah, sure, there were quite a few items around for the collectors, but but everything was kind of rare at that point. In other words, it, it, nothing other than maybe calendars and books, obviously, and things like that. Were, were, nothing was being produced in massive posters. You know, the, the cheap posters, not the one sheets, but the kind that you would buy. Um, uh, this was one of those three sets. I have a lot of dust on it. Um, but the uh, the Jedi spirits, Anakin, Yoga, Yoda, and Obi Wan. Of course, now there'd be a. Is there a fourth? Yeah. Now we. Uh, well, that no, that's the old Anakin, right? The 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 Anakin from the original, not the uh, the, the prequel Anakin. And then we have an Episode One goodie bag. Must be for like Halloween or something like that. Uh, oh, and then we have another three set, and this one is uh, Cant Cantina Aliens. Where did he get all this dust on them? Uh, and this is, um, yeah, from the Cantina from Star Wars. I can't speak. Um, this is the same thing. We probably have this at home somewhere. The, the box for Darth Tater. Uh, I like how the regular potato head is on the front, not not Darth Tater, but anyway, Darth Tater obviously looks like looks like this little guy. And I believe he's somewhere at home in one of our offices or something. Um, these were actually interesting. They got most of these really, really cheap, but they're Star Wars bendums. You know, they're little figures that you can bend and stuff. And I was actually surprised when I looked these up the last time, which was probably 10 years ago, that the value of these had actually done pretty well. And these were all like a dollar, two dollars, I think. But I've got uh, Obi-Wan, R2-D2, um, uh, Darth Vader, and uh, another R2-D2. I've got two R2-D2s. Why well, have one R2-D2 and you can have two? Oh my goodness, this is kind of a giant mess. Um, then I have some interesting items I collected over time. These are, this is the original Star Wars, uh, well, not the original Star Wars, but the the, the reissue uh, in v on VHS. This was the VHS that I owned. Um, although I think we have the whole box set, I'm not sure the rest of them are. And then this is an original Star Wars uh, release uh, through CBS Box, a box, and, and the tape is in here too. And this was, I believe, a Blockbuster. Uh, it's got a Blockbuster label on the bottom here, so it was a rental. Probably in crap shape, but you never want to play it. Uh, Spaceballs. I want to say that I actually shrunk wrap all these myself, but I might not have. Maybe I just bought them that way. And then... Okay, that's interesting. I have no idea why this is in here. The the secret policeman's ball, which I kind of even forgot. It looks like it has a lot. It has John Cleese in it, but it's some kind of movie. I, isn't that Sting? It looks like is that Sting or David Bowie? No, Sting, isn't it? Yeah, Sting from the Police. Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, Phil Collins of Genesis, Pete Townsend of the Who, 
So interesting. It says Monty Python fans should love it. I think it's like a, a I want to say it's a play, like an actual like stage play. I, don't, I have no idea why it's in this box with my other Star Wars things. Okay, now these are items that I actually got recently. Well, recently, like five, ten years ago. They're the Masterpiece Collection. They were sold at like Barnes & Noble or Borders. Um, and they do have a figure. This is Anakin. And it has the book. This is the Anakin Skywalker, the story of Darth Vader. And these, if you were if you were good, you could catch these on like clearance. And they were super cheap because uh, they were originally sold for $75 was the list price. And at a bookstore, it was pretty much $75 until they lowered it. And then this one is that Aura Singh character again. So she's in here. Um, a little bit packaged a little bit differently, but yeah, with the, the book and the, the figure. So yeah, those are kind of neat. Those are good finds. And we have a box here with just oh, random figures in it, I think. So we've got um, underwater accessory set. Why did I get that? <laughs> um, Tatooine accessory set. This must have been when I was in my I was buying everything phase. Although I don't remember why I would want those. Um, this is the um, Expanded Universe, which I didn't really follow all that much, but I did uh, Grand Admiral Thrawn. He's from the books, and I did read the books. So he's got a little a little lizard pet up around his neck, now, which is funny because I'm reading the Honor Harrington series, and she has like a little tree cat on her, up above her like head. Uh, Hoth Chewbacca with Bowcaster. Oh, my goodness, I might sneeze. There's some definite dust in here. Kwai John Jin. Just a regular Kwai John episode one figure. Um, and it looks like a Jar Jar Binks episode one figure. Nothing too fancy here. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, again, expanded universe. This is um, Imperial Sentinel. He's in a really thick box. It almost looks like this. Oh, this expand. Oh, this actually creates a little a little a set for him, like a little, um, a little uh, display stand for him. And again, with that same expanded universe, this is Space Trooper. So how long have we been going here? 22 minutes? All right, that's not too bad. And um, C-3PO, obviously. Standard C-3PO figure. Uh, Endor Rebel Soldier. So that's uh, that. And then that just leaves us one box here at the end. Oh, wait, there's something in there. There's something wrapped on the other thing. Oh, here, here's my Ray Parks signed. So this is my... Uh, I bought this at uh, WonderCon, I want to say in 2005-ish or something like that. Um, WonderCon was, at that point, was up in the Bay Area. But Ray Parks was there, and he signed this one right here. So, And to Jim, it says up there. I think he signed it twice. It's there and there he signed it. But, yeah, he's a nice guy. Very easy. Very easy to approach and talk to and so forth. Um, I actually met a couple people then. I met... Um, who's now just passed away. I met Peter Mayhew, um, got a sick signature from him. He was very quiet, very, very reserved guy. Um, but, you know, kind of a gentle giant, you know, as most people, I think, described him after his, after his death. And uh, I, met, I met a bunch of people. I met Richard Hatch. I talked to Richard Hatch for, like, forever at that, at that show because it was kind of, we kind of got there early. We were part of the, um, we were part of the, of a, um, a Firefly group. Um, that was set up nearby, and uh, Brown Coats, the Brown Coats group, and so we had a little booth there, and it was right next to the, the celebrity signing area. So, yeah, there were quite a few people um, that were in that area that I was, well, a few people I wouldn't even probably approach and talk to, even though I knew who they were, but, but yeah, some others. All right, so this is my, uh, this is my doll. So. <laughs> no, no, this is Princess Leia, you know, in Slave Girl, so, you know, you gotta have that. You're gonna have a collection. This one was originally 60 bucks, marked down to 29.99. So with a little R2D2, that's cute with the thing, and they've got the little salacious crumb here up, like hanging from the ceiling. Not an actual figure, but just a cardboard. I want to say that was also like a special somewhere. Um, it's almost like a Barbie figure. And then again, this is something I must have got for Christmas because I never would have bought this by myself. But so the same, or again, a Princess Leia on a speeder bike. So she's pretty cool. Uh, don't even want to know what they paid for this. Probably way too much. But yeah, um, one of the one of the bigger items, I think, at least in this batch of stuff. And what else? We've got um, a Star Wars Episode One 
ComTech Reader. This was something you could use with the figures. They had these little bases that I guess would like do voices and stuff. So this is the ComTech Reader. I'm hoping that didn't have batteries in it because if it does, it's probably been ruined. Let's see. I can't really see to tell. It doesn't have the thing where you can punch it and get it to work. So that's good. I don't see anything that says, try it. Oh, okay. It requires one 9-volt battery. Not included. Yay, okay. All right, so didn't, that didn't get spoiled. And then we have a probe droid with dust. The dust is extra. That cost me extra. Um, we have some die casts. I think these are die casts. If not, they're just plastic. Um, but episode one, Pod Racing, Pod Racer Pack 4. No idea why I would have got this. Again, I'm thinking this was a Christmas gift of some kind because I, I don't have any interest in those two Pod Racers, so can't see why I would have bought it. Um, the Gunner Station, TIE Fighter, and Darth Vader. So I guess this is like a little, again, you can kind of set this up as a little, what he looks like in his thing. Oh, and there's a handle. If you want to play with it, you can kind of run him around, you know, like Darth Vader in his TIE Fighter. Um, I'd rather have the TIE Fighter myself, but then we have a couple of these little plush guys. This is, uh, what's his name from Return of the Jedi? I think he was in the band. I don't know where his instrument is. Uh, Max Rebo. And then this is my my little favorite Wicket figure. Uh, these are the Star Wars buddies. Wicket the Ewok, who was played by Warwick Davis, who also was in Legend, oh, not Legend, who was also in Willow. And uh, he's been in a bunch of stuff, actually. I think he was just in, he's in he was in Star Wars, he was in the prequels, uh, but I don't know what character he was playing. I mean, obviously he was, oh yeah, he was one of the little, I think he's one of the people at the pod racing, I want to say. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in 12-inch. He's got an interesting neck thing going on there with a little, you can see that, but a little thing around his neck. This is obviously in, when they're in the Million Falcon with the, um, the testing, or, uh, lightsaber thingy. Um, this one, I believe, is my Han Solo that I was talking about earlier, uh, except he's not in here. Oh no, this is, oh, this is something else, actually. This is, uh, what the heck did I do with this? Why isn't it in the bag? This is something else I had to send off for. It was the, remember, you know, remember the beginning of Return of the Jedi when they go up to the, the Jabba the Hutt's palace and they knock on the door, C-3PO and R2-D2, and kind of a little thing sticks its head out. Well, I don't know if for those of you who've watched the movie really well, uh, you'll notice that when the door is open and then as they're walking through, if you look in the background, there's this like spidery thing that was obviously the thing that had stuck his little thing out through the door, but they don't really show it and they kind of show it really fast. But anyways, that's what this was, Bomar Monk. And I don't know where the thing is, though. Why would I have not uh, just kept it here in the bag? I don't know. Maybe it's wrapped up somewhere. And that leaves with a Star Wars Han Solo plastic figure, again, from AMT. Uh, so that's an, another model. Two models in a bunch. Obi-Wan Kenobi, um, again, this was kind of these like set pieces where I think you could get the Darth Vader, yeah. You could get the Darth Vader and then kind of have this little thing. I don't know if I have the Darth Vader somewhere. I would never pull it out of the thing, of course, as a collector. I'm not gonna remove it, so, but yeah. And that just leaves a Hallmark ornament, Boba Fett, Star Wars Boba Fett. Uh, which has probably been used. I would imagine we maybe had it on our Christmas tree or something one, at least one year. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe I just put it away. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was that, that's the last little piece of this group of boxes. And as I said, I want to say there are four, five, six boxes like these with more stuff in them somewhere in storage. Um, so yeah, this is this doesn't even touch any of the figures that I've collected for um, that 1995 uh, later period. Um, up to the prequels. These are pretty much all figures that came out after, I believe, the prequels are around the Power of the Force figures. These ones that are um, Power of the Jedi, actually. I think there was the original set, and then there was Power of the Force set, and this is Power of the Jedi set, so yeah, these are all the later ones. Um, well, if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know. So, you know, if I, I won't do the, I won't publish the next one if you, if this wasn't something you guys found interesting. I know that when I did my uh, my old model box stuff. I, I pulled that up. People like those videos, but then again, that was about models, and this is about Star Wars stuff. So you can see in the background here, though, I do have a nice Rancor with Luke Skywalker. That's one of the few pieces that I actually pulled out of its box, and I don't even think I have the box anymore, but I might. Um, I've got some Star Wars... Uh, here, I'll... 
probably pull this down. Some Star Wars patches that I collected over the years. These are some of these are pretty rare. The the Empire Strikes Back patch was a crew patch, and this was given to people in the Star Wars club. So this patch dates to around 1980, 1981. Um, the Revenge of the Sith patch, which is also given out to Star Wars fan club members, um, Revenge of the Jedi. Excuse me, Revenge of the Jedi. Um, and that was given out in 1980 before they changed the title, I want to say, but it might have been slightly after that. And then, of course, they, this is the crew patch that that would have said Re Revenge of the Jedi, but they changed it to Return of the Jedi. I guess Lucas was a bit, you know, a stickler on that. And this patch right here, this this graphic, was really the first time that this logo with Star Wars A New Hope was used for a patch. Um, obviously, they didn't have this patch when they did. This is what... This, they had this crew patch when they worked on the movie, and I believe a similar patch for this one, like I said, with the but they never had a patch like this when they worked on Star Wars. This was created afterwards, kind of probably at the same time. This was created, Lucas probably was like, oh, let's have some continuity and say we had you know, this patch for A New Hope. But as far as I'm aware, he never even had named Star Wars A New Hope, at least in the script and so forth. Uh, and again, these are some special patches that the club had access to, the Rebel Forces patch and the Empire Strikes Back smaller patch down there as well. So those are some of my little more kind of rare prize, prizey like collection pieces. I'm going to try to put that back up right now. Um, but yeah, like I said, if you want to see more of these videos, let me know. If not, that's fine too. You can downvote. I, I'll, I'll do a poll. If I get too many downvotes, I'll say, all right, well, yeah, there ones. of course, you can always click through. And now I have a huge mess that I have to then repack. But at least, I, like I said, I, for my benefit, I have a video of all of these items and what was in these boxes so it's that I, when I repack all these I will kind of know what this, this selection of stuff was. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time probably on a modeling video but uh, yeah this was a little bit of a, an odd detour so thanks for watching.